All right, time to code, time to code, time to code. Definitely time to code. Let us, let us, let us. Take one small thing and then, here we go. It was a long day at work, just getting home, kind of tired in the brain, but I have this uh, kind of concept called progress every day, and I've noticed that if I can just make some token progress on my little <clears throat> moonlighting project, that eventually it adds up like pennies in the piggy bank, and eventually things get done. I have pushed on through a number of projects and finished them up that way. So I got my little PED counter that's up and up up over here. This is the number of days in a row that I've been cleaning sober, or uh, no, that I have made progress every day. So the, today I'm going to make a token amount of progress because I got home so friggin' late. I'm going to do something though. I will definitely get something done, something useful done, so I can. Uh, Maintain my self-respect and my sense of momentum. Definitely. So what to do? Uh, yesterday I had some success putting together fairly quickly a uh, pushable block. And there were a few things about it that I felt like I needed to come back to and make sure I, I cleaned up well. And uh, first I'll, I'll do one thing that's just uh, for pure joy. I'm going to go back to my little block here in the Unity Scene Editor and uh, I'm going to give it a nice little effect. It is a trail. Trail renderer. Now for the trail renderer to actually show something good you have to tweak the settings quite a bit I know I have another prefab here that has trail renderer settings that I like just fine so I'm just gonna go to that I'm gonna find those settings and copy them over and I think that's that's the way to do it I think uh, if I can just remember where it was Character one, was that it? No, okay. Let's see, character. Don't, don't. Just go into the hierarchy because I totally forget which particular thing had. The renderer attached to it. And I kind of wonder are these the actual mesh or are they. These, I think, are not the actual mesh. I think these are applied applied to the, the character to transform them. Uh, come on, where are you at? Where are you at? There it is. Okay. There's a trail renderer for this guy. I can just go, <clears throat> I can copy the component. I can back out, go back to my, my block. And I've already have like a default trail renderer. So now I just paste the component values and it should be set up in such a way that yeah, I get a little bit of a trail render now. Um, now let's see what that looks like while well, I'm actually playing the game. I'm not going to tweak it too much. I just thought, let's throw that trail render on there because it makes it so that you can see where the block is going. The physics of this game are such that when you push an object, it is instantly at its destination. So 
it's not real visible. So I'm not seeing much there. It might be that I really need to tweak that to be uh, a lot more visible. I didn't see anything at all. Huh. There was nothing at all. Let me just, uh, let me make it just really stupid obvious, just to make sure I'm not missing something. So there, if I do that, I set the width of it higher. Now it's got kind of a blobby effect. Um, the other thing I can do is I can set it that it's time to live higher. So I just want to make sure that it's actually it's actually uh, working. So it should be stupid obvious now. You just hate it when there's something that's supposed to be like really simple and easy and you've already done it three or four times and then it just doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't even work uh, and you felt like an expert when you started and then you're not an expert you're not an expert so why would it not be working it wasn't even like a, a big ambitious thing that I wanted to try I just thought I'll just throw this on real quick and I'll be done um, so here it's clearly generating the trail could be the color I got this checked that's on You know, I bet it has to do with uh, the movement itself. Well, you know what? This was not the main thing I wanted to work on. I look at the piece pushed effect. One thing that I made different for the first time was uh, setting the position this way. Delayed done. So this was specifically made to to add one extra update so that the trail would show. I'm going to put this other code into the case for non-rotating which is my block because I think this is one thing that's different and changed so I'm going to see if that makes any difference uh, let's build and there's other problems with this code being here but it's just for a quick test so the difference would be uh, does the rotation that I have applied um, using that other method matter to showing the trail I don't think it should but like I said I'm trying to narrow down the cause and that is one thing that changed waiting for the unity build all right all right so, um, now there's just kinds of weirdness that were the bug that's the bug from the rotation being used okay I still didn't see any trail oh 
Why don't you paste the original values back in? Oh. All right, let's go back to the brawler. There's the trail renderer. Copy component. It had all this. It had default particle. Light map parameters, none, blah, blah, blah. All that worked. I assume it still works. For the brawler. I may throw a brawler on just to make sure it's still working for the brawler. That's a reasonable idea. Backing up. Let's throw a brawler on there too. See, 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 see the trail with the brawler. No, that's interesting. It's a different kind of trail than the other one that I had. So let me drop the brawler there. And then I'm gonna paste component values again. Really? I just said to overwrite what I have here. Man, you're making this really tough on me, aren't you? Okay. So remove the component, add the component back in. Let's do effects, trail renderer. Okay. Paste component values. And then it like it's not even copying across the stuff I know should have come from this other guy. So there might be something weird going on with that copy and paste. Uh, let's go back to Brawler. Let's go back to this guy. Just kind of eyeball this stuff. Default particle size. Okay. Oh, 0 0.2.5, all that, okay. Um, copy the component. Okay. It wouldn't be the end of world end of the world if I just had to set it all up by hand. It'd be annoying and inexplicable, but it wouldn't be that bad. Oh what? So I <laughs> I didn't even paste the values. It's just like when it wasn't taking before, it actually did update it. All right, so so here's the thing that's making me think something's off. Sure, there's polygons being generated for the trail, but you wouldn't see them except for that edge outline around it. They are uh, filling in transparently. Whereas this guy, I want to drag him around. <clears throat> You can see like that whiteness there. So what is missing? What is missing from here? Let me first start by picking the material explicitly. No? Okay. I'll try picking a different material. I'll pick the other one that can work. Yeah, so that one that one actually shows. That one shows up. Okay. So this won't be the final trail I want on anyways. I just wanted something that showed. So hit play again. I just want a trail that's visible. I just want to see that block moving. Oh, I gotta turn off that rotation hack that I put in there, so let's do that. Put this back to the right code instead of the troubleshooting code. Save that. <clears throat> uh, fine. Read on. Okay, save that. Build that. While I'm waiting for that to build, do I want to adjust the trail renderer slightly? I 
think, yeah, let's make it just really friggin' obvious. Kind of needs it. All right. I feel like this is going to work. Okay, the trail worked. It looks kind of screwed up. Like it's it's offset wrong. I know how to fix that kind of thing. I just don't want to do it right now. So it's like it's offset <clears throat> to be not in the center of the, uh, the block. And that's okay, I can fix that later. Mission accomplished as far as just adding a basic trail to the block. I want to get to the under the hood stuff. Uh, oh yeah, before I forget to do it, I better copy the, the block back to the prefabs. Okay. Save the scene, save project. Alright, off to code land. Stuff that I wanted to fix. Um, okay, so inside of my f my function for walking, I had a bunch of new code that would push these blocks, and it was inelegant. code I've got here is two problems with it. One is that it's it's repetitive. Two is that um, it's tightly coupled to known behavior of existing elements. If I add some new elements in, I'll have to think kind of hard about how to change the code again. I would rather make this code much more generalized for touching. And a third problem is just this section of code is gotten fairly large it feels like a good candidate for refactoring so I'll think about the interface for that first so if I just kind of separate out this code I can kind of tell that this is probably going to be the thing that gets put off to another function uh, looking for the reason I didn't like grab up all this is I didn't want the the function to have like a, a really gross coupling to the parent caller. Um, so let's see, it could be like, uh, touch pieces. at okay and it could be passing in I know I could do it. okay so I can do touch pieces at might as well just do it like this touch pieces at new call new row touch height okay and then I had an issue where the touch height, if you're going um, at an angle, it might miss touching something. So if touch height not equal height, then let's also touch pieces at height. So I'll just make sure that kind of everything gets touched that could potentially want to be touched. Okay, and then there's this uh, is alive thing. I should just have one 
check of is alive after each thing. So if I touch something and you know what it's 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 good enough to just have one right at the end like this. So it you'll touch a whole bunch of things potentially you could touch a number of things and then even if the first one of them killed you that's okay you're still allowed to touch the other things it's sort of like your last dying grope of the world touch any pieces in the direction of movement okay so then Let's do this the C sharp way. Oh, I'm also going to need to pass uh, the board, uh, the effects, friggin' knobs to activate. Because it's possible to. Well, I need the board as a reference of all the game data to be able to do anything possible that I touch something that creates uh, an effect. An effect is passed back to the view layer. It's things, you know, could be an explosion, something like that. Something that has nothing to do with the game state, but um, but that does uh, have like a, a need to be expressed within the view. Knobs to activate is, is too complicated to explain, but it's basically another type of side effect. Okay, public uh, board. Touch pieces app. C N R N T H. Ref board board ref effects effects. Ref list I knob. Knobs to activate. Okay. So far, not bad. So, the other thing I can make it a little bit drier is uh, this O piece, M piece thing. So, it's not too hard I have to say. I'll go through the two layers that I have. This little loop will be hard coded to the layer count. It doesn't matter that much. It's very easy to understand code, so it doesn't matter. To say piece, piece equals, um, I, I can at least do this much. Layer I. Layer I. This is two. I could do like some fancy casting thing to the enum, but I just don't see the point. Piece equals layer i equals zero. Uh, or uh, this thing, get o. And if it's one, I'll get the piece from the m layer. Say if not piece. No, it's better to be positive than negative. If piece. I can do better than that. I can say if piece is I touchable. Touchable piece. And now we'll handle the null check as well as the, the class type check and the casting all in one line okay touchable piece touch this ref why are you complaining about knobs to activate is did i name it differently yes i did that'll fix it cut 
there. That's going to be about it for that. Okay. So what that gave me is some code that um, is easier to maintain and is general in nature. Gives me a small chance of adding something in the future without even having to write new code. Um, and you could say that would be a foolish thing to hope for. But the truth is I've already seen the benefits yesterday and today of this approach when the pushing code that I had written a long time ago was written g generically so it could push anything. It pushes monsters and without really changing too much inside of it, it pushes blocks as well. So I know I'm not being too silly. Um, what are you complaining about? Okay, another little type of effects. Effects, there we go. So that's good. This I can take out. Oh, wait. Just this line. Okay. So it's not too bad. Um, so it's still arguably quite a big function, but I'm not a fan of, of just refactoring because you have a long function. That on its own is not quite enough reason to refactor. It's a, it's a smell. It means, yeah, take a look at it, but if the interfaces that you have to create in order to break up that function, they aren't intuitive, if they're especially brittle, um, there's no point. This I'm fine with because it, it kind of makes sense when you read it. Touch the pieces at a certain set of coordinates on the board, uh, keep track of side effects. That's pretty easy to understand. Um, other things that I might refactor down here, I don't think they're necessarily going to be as neatly separated. It would just be the moral uh, moral equivalent of uh, writing like a, a page of your story on a, a page someplace else, and you have to go look it up when you're right in the middle of reading the story. Uh, so, oh yeah, uh, too much talking about that. Let's keep coding. Uh, should just check that it works. I didn't break anything. Let's build it. Just add a few more things for this to bump around on. kind of a problem that when I'm working with OBS it seems like it slows down my Unity development a little bit and that's not surprising uh, quite a lot of processing being taken up by that video encoding um, I guess there's better ways to do it but you know it's not it's not that bad so I built that did it succeed yeah it was fine hit play working yeah oh yeah that's pretty cool I would like to see if the creature will push the block as well. That would be kind of cool. Look at that. Yeah. That was that was cool. To me it was cool. I wanted the creatures to mostly have the same powers as the player. And 
and uh, so it'll be a little bit chaotic but I think I want the creatures to be pushing blocks around too and a big part of the design here is that uh, once I have everything set up right that there is no situation you can get into where it's really you can't just keep playing and, and fix it so those blocks if they get stuck you just walk into them again and uh, they will uh, be destroyed and then I'll also have something like an infinite block generator that uh, kind of like in portal where if your block gets destroyed another one drops out okay so that's all good next thing now that I've got a little bit of momentum it makes me think should I keep going or should I quit while I'm ahead I think I think I should keep going I think I should uh, let me go back to here I'm now satisfied with the ugly logic let's do falling logic so the type of piece I have is called an M piece it means it's kept on a certain layer and it tends to be movable and a rule I made with M pieces is that when one M piece falls on another it destroys the M piece that's underneath of it kinda of like uh, when Mario jumps on top of a monster and uh, it, that monster just dies. Um, but blocks are different. Blocks, I want them to be stackable. I, if you put a block on top of another block, I want it to be two blocks high. I don't want the second block to destroy the first block. So I'm going to create another property of pieces called stackable. And that's going to affect what happens when they fall. is pushable. Okay, is rotatable. So by default, I'm going to say things are not stackable. Unless you override this and declare something to be stackable. So then I'll go over to the block piece and I'll override this method and I'll make my block stackable. or at least declare it stackable. I still have to write the code that actually pays attention to its stackable attribute, its stackability. Um, and that is inside of a function called land. After pieces arrived at square, checks for any fallen needed and handles. So check for fallen to infinite death. No, that's not something that would change. Following. Check for, let's call it a non stackable M at landing square. So that makes me consider what stackable means. Does it mean that the thing falling needs to be stackable in order for it to not destroy what's underneath of it? Or does it mean that the thing that is being landed upon needs to be stackable? And I can kind of think through that by considering some different test cases. So, um, first one be let's call call this thing a um, block, let's call this a brawler. If the brawler, non stackable, lands on the block, I want the brawler to go here. I just stay on top of it. Conversely, and I see how this is going already, but I might as well play through it a little bit. If a block lands on top of the brawler who's non stackable, I want the block to destroy brawler a brawler on top of a brawler both are not stackable I know that's destruction a yeah oh yeah it's pretty clear um, so it, it's the thing that's being landed upon whether it's not that that thing is stackable it's not the thing falling 
so if m piece not equal null meaning that if the if the space we're landing at has something in it it is an m piece occupying the m layer and the m piece is stackable but really i mean not stackable if it's not stackable then i'll destroy it i will destroy it if it is stackable that's fine okay so that 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 might do it if it does i'm going to feel really smug because that would also mean that I set things up in such a nice general way that I didn't have to write a lot of special casing and I could just make some general rules and it just worked kind of like adding laws of the universe so let's save that let's build that let's go edit the scene to create some kind of case eventually I'll, I'll do this all with unit tests but it's fun to see it working in the scene first uh, all right, spinny wheel. Okay, so then let's let's get rid of the brawler for now. And let's take one of these. Make it something that we can kind of uh, run the test from. So. make a little platform to put the player and the block on. I'll give them more than one block. Uh, but, okay, where are you at? Where are you at? There we go. What? Yeah. Sometimes I mean to grab one thing and I grab something else. Okay, so there's the player. Put the player on the platform. Nope, too far. That would do it. Okay. Get the block up there too. Ah, it does occur to me there's one more thing that I haven't done yet. Uh, okay, so then let us add one more block the same so okay so this will allow me I'll, I'll push this one east and I'll push this other one east on top of it um, it might work out of the box let's see this to east I expect it to hit the wall all the way to the east and then go straight down it did just like I hoped for that's great I didn't even test that before I just assumed it worked but I'm happy my assumptions right okay now this other one will stack on top of the first one It'd be very exciting to me if it did <gasps> oh <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, now the last test. If I fling myself east, um, my character has a command where he can travel all, she can travel all the way in one direction and then uh, get caught by an obstacle before landing. So I'll fling east. I hope to land on top of those two blocks. I did. That is such a large amount of success all at one time. Um, so that's pretty cool it means it means it means that the walls and ceiling data structure which is called heights that keeps track of all the walls and ceilings is being updated correctly um, when two of those blocks get moved it means stacking is working right so 
One thing I don't think will work quite right is if I push in. So what happened there is I moved into the square and destroyed destroyed the block underneath the top one. So you are able to in this game destroy things by pushing them and if there's nowhere else for them to go they are destroyed. There's no nifty animation there of the box being destroyed. Uh, but that's what's happening. So uh, the problem is not that that box is gone, it's that the top box did not react because we haven't written code yet for it to react to there suddenly being space underneath of it. So what it should do what it should do is um, fall down on top of the player and kill the player. So but you know what? It's like eight o'clock. I know I only spent like uh, you know forty five minutes or so on this, but late day at work and uh, yeah now I'm heading off into that magical time when I make dinner and my partner gets home and uh, we watch a few movies and go to bed I'm literally three hours away from my bedtime and uh, yeah so this is a good place to stop let's do that For anyone uh, watching this on replay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I am these days on doing this live coding thing typically from 6 to 8 p.m. PST Monday through Thursday. On Sundays, I rally a little bit and uh, have it 3 p.m. PST. Uh, something that's more like a, a demo of the game maybe not as much live coding uh, maybe discussion about game design or something else uh, so if you're into that then come on down at 3 p.m. PST Pacific Standard Time on any given Sunday I say that like it's gonna be that way for eternity but these days uh, that is the current situation so see y'all later bye Stop in the stream, stop in the stream, stop.